Like other legacy-seeking U.S. presidents, Barack Obama wants to heal the Middle East and force Israel and Muslim terrorist groups like Hamas and the PLO to stop fighting each other. But you can't really do deals with terrorist groups. That's the whole point of terrorist groups. They don't want a peace deal. It's like trying to do a peace deal between the police and bank robbers. The bank robbers don't want a deal. They want to be bank robbers. Well, after nearly seven years of Obama's presidency, the whole Middle East is in flames. And the Islamic State, an actual terrorist country, well, it's been around for more than a year and it's growing. It's got nearly 10 million citizens in it. Obama actually thought that because he was born a Muslim, his, his father was a Muslim, his stepfather was a Muslim too, that maybe he could win over the Muslim world with hollow speeches like he's won over so many leftists in America and Europe over the years. But it didn't work. I mean, even when he went to Cairo in 2009 and gave his big apology speech to the Muslim world, renouncing America's old ways and specifically introducing himself by emphasizing his middle name, Hussein. Do you remember that? Now, much has been made of the fact that an, Ameri an African American with the name Barack Hussein Obama could be elected president. Yeah, total failure. I mean, whatever you think of George W. Bush, and I think that history will vindicate much of what he did, at least Bush didn't cut and run. U.S. soldiers liberated Iraq and Afghanistan at a huge cost of blood and treasure, but Obama just gave that all away, right back to the terrorists, along with enormous numbers of abandoned U.S. military vehicles and other weapons. It's actually never been worse in the Middle East than it is now, and it's getting worse by the month. Now that Obama has given Iran the green light to continue its nuclear program and to lift economic sanctions and weapons embargoes off Iran. I mean, I, Iran has Obama's approval to become the new regional superpower, even though it continues to be the world's greatest backer of terrorism. So I saw with interest this quote from Israel's director general of the foreign ministry, Dori Gold, uh, just the other day. Uh, here's what he said in a speech in New York, and I quote, What we have is a regime on a roll that is trying to conquer the Middle East. And it's not Israel talking. That is our Sunni Arab neighbors. And you know what? I'll use another expression. That is our Sunni Arab allies talking. Isn't that amazing? Israel's boss of the foreign ministry just called its Arab neighbors, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, other Gulf states, he called them allies. And they are. I mean, sure, they're still anti-Semitic. There are no Jews left in those countries. I mean, sure, Saudi Arabia is a sponsor of anti-Semitic Wahhabi Islam around the world, too, including here in Canada. But on the key pressing existential threat of Iran getting the nuclear bomb and their express intention of using it, it's true they're allies. The Sunni Arabs are Israel allies. Out of desperation, abandoned by the U.S. president, thrown to the Iranian wolves, Israel and its Arab neighbors are now allies. What other choice do they have? Hey, I guess Obama actually did help bring a little bit of peace to the Middle East after all. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.